the head-to-head -head battle of the 2020 Acer Predator Helios 300 versus the 2020 Asus ROG Strix G Series has arrived, and I have run each of these laptops through 14 plus creator focused benchmarks covering video editing in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, motion design, graphic design, photo editing, 3D modeling, and more. We're going to find out if the Asus Strix G Series or the Acer Predator Helios 300 is the right laptop for your needs. Let's get rocking! <laughs> If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're gonna find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. If you're curious about the exact pricing of either of these laptops as we're heading through the video, you can head down into the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do use that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Jumping right into the build quality, both laptops display the emblem of their branding on the top cover of the laptop. The Strix G with its ROG face and the Helios with its Predator face. The Predator Helios stands out more with its glowing backlit emblem, whereas the Strix G boasts a shiny metallic appearance. Concerning the build quality, my vote swings toward the Helios 300 with its all aluminum top cover and the glowing Predator face. For a plastic top cover, the Strix G is well built, but you just can't beat aluminum in my opinion. I do want to note that the Strix G model that I have in my possession is the G17 variant. The G15 and G17 share nearly identical specs, but if you are interested in some of the highlighted differences, you can check out the comparison video I have filmed discussing the differences in the YouTube cards above after this video is finished. Regarding the ports of each of these laptops, I always encourage people to think about their own use cases. The latest and greatest ports are great, but if they are not fitting your needs, then they are in a sense useless. So observe the ports shown here and choose wisely. The Helios 300 comes with an aluminum top cover, keyboard deck, and side panels, and a plastic bottom cover. Whereas the Asus ROG Strix G17 comes with an all plastic build. As I mentioned before, the Asus uses good quality materials that feel sound and firm. The Strix G does not have the cheap laptop feel um, and it is well put together. I know in the past I've felt some gaming laptops and they just feel really hollow and they feel like they've used cheap plastic. That is not the case with the Strix G. Although I must say it is hard to compete with the aluminum build on the Helios 300. So my vote still goes to the Helios for build quality. As I open the lid on each of these laptops, I'm able to do so with one hand. The hinges are smooth and strong. There's only a slight bit of screen flex that is equally present on the Strix G as well as the Helios 300. I would rate the hinges as a tiebreaker. Both are solid and sturdy. Before we move on to the screen quality, I want to discuss the ventilation on these two laptops. Both the Strix G and the Helios 300 have generous vents for cooling. They both have vents on the bottom cover, behind the keyboard deck, and on top of the keyboard deck, but the Helios 300 has a vent on both side panels, whereas the Strix G only has a vent on the right side. Now, how noisy are the fans and how well do they cool the laptops during the benchmark test coming up later in the video? At idle, both fans kick on quietly at 37 decibels. During the 4K video editing export in Premiere Pro, the Helios 300 ramps up to 51 decibels, and the Strix G17 gets a little louder at 56 decibels. During the DaVinci Resolve export, the fans on the Helios 300 were at 55 decibels, and the Strix G was at 58 decibels. Now, for the Photoshop benchmark, the test for the Helios 300, we saw 51 decibels, and for the Strix G, we saw 57 decibels. Now to check how well the fans did cooling the components during these different benchmark tests, here are the benchmark results. Alright, now that we have covered these details, let's get into the screen quality. The Acer Predator Helios 300 comes with a 15.6 inch Full HD 16 by 9 display that can reach 144 hertz at a response time of 3 milliseconds. At full brightness, it can reach 310 nits with a color gamut range of 97% sRGB, 77% Adobe RGB, and 77% DCI-P3, all at an average Delta E of 1.86. For a gaming laptop, that is a fantastic screen. The Strix G17 comes with a 17.3 inch Full HD display with a 144 hertz refresh rate and has a response time of 3 milliseconds. Concerning the brightness and quality of the screen, it can reach for 325 nits at full brightness 
and is a color gamut range of 98% sRGB, 75% Adobe RGB, and 75% DCI-P3, and an average Delta E of 1.95. Now this is really important to note. The base model screen on the Strix G does not have the same screen quality. If you're considering the Strix G15, I made a brief head-to-head -head comparison as I mentioned earlier in this video, and you can check that out in the YouTube cards above after you finish this video, of course. But for the brevity's sake, note that the base model screen on the Strix G15 can only reach 250 nits at full brightness and has a color gamut range of 60% sRGB and 38% Adobe RGB. Why Asus does not equip their base model G15 with a better screen is beyond me, but I must say it is a disappointment. I thought that this was really important to mention because it is one of the significant differences between the G15 and the G17. All right, now back into the review of the Helios versus the G17. Both of these laptops have full keyboards, including the numpad. They have slightly different configurations of the keys. The Helios 300 has all of the keys bunched together in a clean, aesthetically pleasing cluster, whereas the Strix G allows the keys to set out past the cluster. Personally, I like the organization of the Helios 300, but that is really splitting hairs. The typing experience on both keyboards is nearly identical in feel. I like the key press. It is smooth and snappy with a medium length in the key press. Both keyboards come with customizable RGB lighting, which equally looks great. Honestly, I can say that there is no winner in this category. They are both great picks concerning the keyboards. The trackpads, on the other hand, are completely different animals. The Helios 300 comes with an all-in-one trackpad, and the Strix G comes with a trackpad and dedicated left and right click setup. This is honestly a very hard decision. On one hand, I think the Helios 300 has one of the best trackpads on any gaming laptop. But on the other hand, I really like the dedicated left and right click buttons on the Strix G trackpad. And I think having a dedicated left and right click is great for dragging and dropping, working in the timeline while video editing, and more. Both have great click sensitivity and touch gestures, so I'm going to give it a tie on this one and let you decide what you like personally. If you're needing a laptop to attend virtual meetings, then you are going to want to select the Helios 300, as it is the only one with the 720p webcam in this head-to-head -head battle. If you're enjoying this video and getting some value, then gently press down on that like button and let me know how you plan on using this laptop by dropping a comment below. If you want more content like this in the future, then make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future uploads. Okay, let's get back into the video. On to the main event, the performance benchmarking test between the Asus ROG Strix G17 and the Acer Predator Helios 300. The Asus Rogue Strix G17 I'm reviewing comes with a Intel 10th Gen Core i7-10750H with 6 cores and 12 threads, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 with 8 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM, 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM, and 2 terabytes of NVMe SSD, whereas the Helios 300 comes with a Intel 10th Gen Core i7-10750H with 6 cores and 12 threads, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 with 6 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM, 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM, and 512 gigs of NVMe SSD. As you can see, the Strix G has better specs regarding the GPU and RAM, but I did not want to hold back this review from y'all because I know it is very valuable and you guys have been asking for it. Jumping right into the 3D modeling test, let's take a look at how these laptops handle Autodesk and a few other programs. The G17 scores an Autodesk 3DS max score of 154.31, whereas the Helios 300 scores an Autodesk 3DS Max score of 140. The G17 in Autodesk Maya reaches a 177.5, and the Helios 300 reaches a 177.16, so very close on that Maya test. For the G17, the PTC Creo test was a 148.53, and the Helios 300 is a PTC Creo at 140.64. The G17 SolidWorks test came in at 70.47, and the Helios 300 came in at 68.6. 3D modeling was a close battle, and both laptops nearly performed at the same level on every test. Moving on to motion design, I am using the Puget Systems After Effects benchmark and the After Effects Render benchmark. Per the charts, you can see that the Strix G pulled out slightly ahead of the Helios 300, but not by much. The Strix G scoring a 778, over the Helios 300 683. Things changed a little bit when looking at the After Effects render test. The Strix G with its slightly beefier RTX 2070 GPU was able to pull a little bit of space between these two laptops by scoring a 664 and the Helios 300 scoring a 593. 
Just before moving on to the video editing test, let's take a look to see how well these laptops will perform in Adobe's design suite by benchmarking them with the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark. Both laptops perform well, capturing an equally suitable middle of the chart spot, making each of these laptops a great fit for Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. Now onto my favorite benchmarking test, video editing. First, I'm going to start off with a playback test. For this test, I'm going to use a nine minute 4K clip, adding some motion graphics, and then playing it back in the timeline at full quality. This clip contains 16,177 frames in total, with 7,240 of those frames being motion graphics. The Strix G17 can play back full quality 4K footage in the Premiere Pro timeline without any drop frames thanks to the powerful RTX 2070 GPU. During this test, the Acer Predator Helios 300 saw a drop frame rate of at full quality, 62 frames dropped, at half quality, 2 frames dropped, and at fourth quality, 0 frames dropped. Considering that I was only running Premiere Pro during these tests, you might see more drop frames while multitasking, but you can easily switch to half or fourth quality to continue to get smooth playback in the timeline. Concerning the rendering of motion design effects, I was able to render out the 7,240 frames in just three minutes and 18 seconds using the Strix G, and only 10 seconds slower at three minutes and 28 seconds for the Helios 300. Both are impressive times, for that specific render test. Moving on to the 4K export test, I'm going to take a nine minute 4K clip, place it into Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, then export both out at 1080p and 4K YouTube settings. The G17 for the Premiere Pro 4K to 4K export was able to accomplish it in two minutes and 49 seconds, and the Helios 300 was able to accomplish it in two minutes and 55 seconds. The Premiere Pro 4K to 1080p export for the G17 took 56 seconds, which is the absolute best time I've ever seen on my channel. And the Helios 300 was able to do that same export in 2 minutes and 20 seconds. For DaVinci Resolve, the 4K to 4K export took 9 minutes and 47 seconds from the G17. And from the Helios 300, it took 12 minutes and 41 seconds. For the DaVinci Resolve 4K to 1080p export, it took 4 minutes and 11 seconds. And the Helios 300, that same export in 7 minutes and 3 seconds. The component combination of the Strix G17 is lightning fast. But on each test, the Helios 300 is not far behind. Now regarding the thermal performance during the 4K video edit, you can see that the Helios 300 and Strix G both run at 81 degrees Celsius during the stabilized temps. But the Helios 300 is quieter considering the lower fan decibels mentioned earlier in this video. Also regarding component usage, you can see that the Helios 300 is throttling the CPU more than the Strix G, but the RAM usage in the Helios 300 is much higher than the Strix G due to the fact that it is using a lot of the 16 gigs of RAM rather than having the flexibility of the 32 gigs of RAM in the Strix G17. If you're looking for a high performance laptop with a large screen, or a 15 inch screen if you decide on the G15 with solid color accuracy, great benchmarks, and all of the tests performed and a distinguished build quality, then I would pick up the Asus ROG Strix G17 or G15. However, if you're looking for an all aluminum laptop that performs cool and fairly quiet while getting great benchmark results in Photoshop, video editing, 3D modeling, and motion design all packed within a bright color accurate screen, then you will want to snag the Acer Predator Helios 300. Again, if you're curious about the differences in price between these two models, or you're ready to make a purchase, you can head down into the description below and click one of those links. If you do make a purchase, it will give me a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And I always appreciate when you guys use those links. If you want to watch more videos about the Asus Strix G17 or the Acer Predator Helios 300, you can click or tap the screen over here. Otherwise, keep editing, keep designing, keep creating. I'm Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you here in the next video.